I was a mum when the memories hit. I'd become a mum. So that, I think, triggered a lot of stuff for me. And I... um, I also found the healing and the pain of it just almost too much um, because there was 16 years of memory and recall. And my family of origin immediately davoed me uh, and tried to make me out to be the insane one and tell me I had false memory syndrome and I had no right to ever speak of this again. Um so I, I struggled. It took many decades, actually, Sean, for me to feel confident to start speaking. Um, so now you can't shut me up. <laughs> and so you've written a new book, basically the follow-up to your story, which was on, on Angel's Wings with Flight Path to Healing, and that's really a, a counsels others, you know, other survivors, other victims of, of this abuse to to step out of, I would say, ultimately victim psychology, right? That's really uh, the, the, the victimhood is how, as we know, the, a lot of the society perpetuates um, traumatization yeah. of all of us, right? Not just, not you know, obviously there's sexual abuse and there's physical abuse, but there's verbal abuse and psychological abuse, as we know, right? So we have to all step out of our victimhood, right, into the into becoming more self-empowered beings. Yeah. So how, what is your, what is, what can you offer some, some, some of your insights from this, this book? Well, I think really I, I'm um, very gentle with it because I know for us as survivors, we struggle. Uh, we can get triggered quite easily. We can be shut down quite easily. So it's a step-by-step guide and it focuses on specific things that are common to us, like dissociation, like flashbacks, like the feeling of shame. And then it looks at healing modalities and things we can incorporate. It's challenging for survivors, Sean, because the shame is what keeps us so silent. And mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not saying as survivors, you have to tell someone. I'm saying that we have many ways of telling our story. And one could be through art or one could be through martial arts or one could be through writing poetry or telling a friend, but don't have it held in because it just destroys us. Lives are destroyed yes. by this. Mm. Yes, I think this is uh, self-expression and, and, and art is, you know, you can't spell heart without art. I mean, art is one of the tremendous powers oh. that we have, right, to find our creativity if, we're, if we are going to self-empower and take you know, take our, our creative abilities back. And, uh, art yeah. is one of the, the, main, the great mechanisms and ways of doing it with a sharing what's really within our within our hearts and our, our feelings and our and our memories and our, our wounds, right, working through those wounds. Um, yeah. Were there any, th- any like, they say any new feelings that arose in you did you were you able to find some level of forgiveness with your with your father or you know if he, he was passed on were you able to anyway like find some new forgiveness for your mother for example or just or for the situation and just seeing it in a new light or new perspective that came with, with your healing yeah it's funny you say that with my father i was adamant and so self-righteous i would never forgive him because of what he put me through, um, it's unforgivable. And then I realized one day <laughs> that actually it was only me I was hurting because I didn't have a relationship with him. So he had no idea, and the hate was a bit acidic. So I just want to say, though, that there is no right or wrong about this. It, survivors, we, we need to find when it is okay for us to start even thinking about it and if that never happens that's okay too um but for me i I reached a place where i just needed to it was damaging me this this is what i call a silent pandemic the uh, the silence is so powerful it's shattering good people don't want to face this because it's uncomfortable so what that means is if it's uncomfortable, why can't you just get over it? Why do you have to speak about it? And then it means that for our beautiful uh, tamariki, our children and grandchildren here, uh, they've got nowhere to take it because no one 
really wants to know. Uh, so the cycle perpetuates. And I think as survivors, sometimes we do this too. We get shut down quite easily because of the shame. And you and I were talking before about, you know, our our male survivors and, the you know, almost the double whammy around ever being able to speak. Um, so you can see how, you know, pedophiles and Freemasons and other groups, pedophile rings, are just rubbing their hands with glee because there's no appetite for anyone to really expose this. Um, so that's why people like you, I thank you deeply for being prepared to. And it was Annika that mentioned you to me. Um, and I thought, oh, I'm going to reach out to Sean. <laughs> Say, help me expose this more.